Good afternoon. Uh, 20th of August here today. Been a dull kind of day. It's red hot in the tunnels again. Yesterday it was actually 39 degrees in here. Uh, far too hot to work. I had to come down late at night. Well, later on in the evening and do a bit of work. I've been down this morning, done a fair bit. I thought I'd give you an update. Um, it's just over two weeks since I started, well, did the last video and started showing you how I was removing all the mare's tail. That job's almost complete. I've done it in super time and I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Uh, I've been asked a lot of questions. First one was about, well, questions about how to prepare leak beds for next year. Uh, difficult for me to tell you at the present moment. Obviously, I don't know what you've put in your beds last year. So, but I, I will cover that um, at a late, that slightly later date. But I'm going to show you how to fix broken soil today and how to look at the soil that I've actually moved and riddled from this particular trench. There's a few other questions which I will go through, but I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll have a, a quick look at what I'm doing at the moment. Right, um, we're in the top tunnel. And if you remember, just a couple of weeks back, we looked at this particular trench. It's 50 foot long, three foot wide and three foot deep. And this was full of mare's tail and I've had a hell of a job doing it, but I am pleased with the results. Um, I would think I've got 10 to a dozen bags of root. As we can see here, this is root from the mare's tail. You can see all the way along, these bags all the way along, they're 60 litre compost bags and you can see they're filled all the way along. Now, if you remember, I did say that this particular leak trench, uh, the wall had caved in. Now, that's the footings of the wall. It's fallen over, and as you can see, some of it's there, some of it's on the floor. So all those bricks have got to be removed. Um, as we get to the far end, which I'll walk along and show you. You can see here, there's still a little bit wall up. The further we get, the wall gets a little bit higher. Uh, it hasn't gone over right to the end. But you can see there's bricks on that side so they've all got to be removed this wall knocked out completely and then uh, i'll get on rebuilding this uh, this is a job that I'll probably i'll have to work on for the, over the next maybe month uh, obviously the shows are coming up and i've got quite a bit of work ahead with other things so that'll be put on back burner but the hard task was removing all of this soil all the way along here uh, I would estimate probably about 25 to 30 ton uh, along the bed and as you can see we're still pulling real bad weeds out and I'm going to go along and show you I've got about a yard still to do maybe it's a cubic meter still to do and if we just take a closer look you can see the weeds this is the roots of them you can see the little green shoots on the end that's starting to uh, grow wherever the you can see all the way along it's a real nightmare i've pulled all the mare's tail off the top all the green shoots i've pulled it off the top filled the bag and this is the remainder to be dug out and to be riddled if you remember i made my own riddle uh, it's three foot wide so it fits over the actual footpath and i've riddled soil all the way along now it's an awful lot of soil this right the way through and i will show you Anyone coming in here not knowing much about soil would think, oh, that's really good. The soil used to be good and it's grown some superb crops in here over the years. Um, how This to me is dead soil now. I don't like it riddled, but I've had to do it to get rid of all the, the root out of it. All This is what we've got here. This has come out of the, uh, the riddling machine. Uh, that's what we've ended up with. I have put the pea gravel bits that was left in the soil, you can see here bit of a coarse mix there if you look at the next bed you can see that hasn't been riddled it's still got stones and coarse all the way through it and I do actually prefer that uh, to very fine riddlings now this soil uh, it looks fairly lifeless to me and uh, obviously I'm I do need to do something about it so I'm going to show you what we are doing um, the base of the bed I will go over again once it's empty and I will dig it over just fork it over, remove any further root that I can get out. Uh, a friend of mine told me that lime uh, helps to get rid of mare's tail. So I will lime the base of the bed. I actually don't, I haven't limed this particular garden here for, well, 30 years. 
Uh, I am sat in a basin of uh, magnesium, uh, this area that we're in, so I, I tend not to need lime each year. Uh, as I say, I don't use much lime, well, I've used no lime. Um, but I will lime the base of the bed to try and get rid of the mare's tail and stop it from growing up through the beds. There, I'll then bring a, a good load of well-rotted farm or horse manure. My, in my instance, it would be horse manure. Uh, there were two farms in the village, but they are now, uh, they've stopped having uh, beast on, so there's no farmyard manure. I have a friend who has stables, and I am fortunate I can get some 15-year-old manure from the back of the pile. Uh, he'll drop me a good load off. It's full of worms, it's beautiful. It's what went into my leak beds last year, as we can see along here. That's these are all those beds were done if you remember last year. I will put that in the base of here. I will actually build it up in layers. As we go, uh, this soil that's been riddled, this will be applied in probably six inch layers back in with the manure. Um, once I'm halfway up, I will add trace element 53, uh, 20, 50, sorry, 253 A. These are trace elements that I will add in the soil. If I can find a clean packet here, these have been covered in dust. And you can see there, we've got iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molly, molly and bedroom. Um, that will be applied halfway up the trench and then again on the top of the trench. I will also put any green um, plants that I can get hold of, the remainder of any of my um, plants that I have in the garden. I'll go to the fruit and veg market and see if they've got any old cabbages and cauliflowers and that will be put in and to help feed the worms. I will also add calcium that would go into the, the beds. Uh, I'll just that one pack I'll just water that in and I will also to try and put some um, microorganisms back into the soil I will put some bio lift and I'm gonna buy a new 10 litre drum and that'll go into this particular bed right through the winter. I'll do it every two weeks, adding more and more, keeping it watered, trying to build the worm content up. I also have a friend who has um, a worm farm, and I'm looking to get uh, a few thousand worms in from him to incorporate back in. Also, I've been getting some green manure, as you can see here. Um, this one is mixed packets. Uh, we've got grazing rye on here. And this is another mixture. I'll mix all this seed together. The four packets will get mixed together. Once all this soil is put back into this bed, I will sow that seed, uh, keep it watered. I'll water it with BioLift. And by then the bed will be full back up to a, three, a depth of three foot. This is the footpath that we see here, which the soil will go back out into the trench. And uh, once the green manure grows, it will be dug back into the trench and it will be laid fallow until early spring at which time I'll start work and I will let you know what fertilizers I add. I'll probably analyze this bed, um, but hopefully we have some um, microorganism and worms, worm content. And, uh, you know, I want to see a little bit of life back in the soil. At the moment, it looks quite dead. So that covers that. Um, trench wise, I do always put on what I am doing to the trenches. And if you remember, these are actually three leak beds and an onion bed here. And uh, last year I was so late with the weather, I only planted one bed of leeks, a bed of seedlings. And, well, I've just recently planted these um, cabbages and collies, peas and things like that over the far side. Um, but these beds will be shown. Uh, they've had, this has had no fertiliser. The leek beds did get fertiliser, but uh, nothing. We just put um, what I actually did, I think it was January when we added um, a rock dust and seaweed meal that's all that was out in here i haven't put any fertilizer in these beds i'm going to go around and i'm going to talk a little bit because i've had a few little questions fired at me moving it out of there. right uh i had one chap on uh he purchased onions from well onions and leeks from someone and he's had problems throughout the year and he phoned up to see um well he thought it was virus that had gone from the leeks into the onions and he was losing them and uh, he explained he was going to do away with them all this year and wanted fresh stock for next year. I honestly don't think it is virus because virus doesn't travel that quickly. Now I will show you a few different things here and I will show you what virus looks like. 
uh, virus takes a little while to build up and I can't see it transferring in onion seed which he grew his onions from um, it would not transfer in onion seed so I don't think it's had one season wouldn't build up enough virus to you know affect the plants for my view it would be thrip now I'm going to move along here and just show you some damage now then these are spring cabbage now uh, they've really grown they've only been in maybe three weeks growing like mad what we have to watch out for is eggs off the cat the butterfly cabbage white if you see that just rub them off gets rid of them before they turn into caterpillars that's clean but i'm going to show you some thrip damage this is what thrips do to cabbage they do the same to onions and they do the same to leeks uh, these have been sprayed once I've seen that. Uh, if you remember the last time I had the video on, we had a few little holes appear, which we've got here. Uh, I thought that was possibly from caterpillars or possibly even earwigs. Uh, they were sprayed for that, which conquered that, but the spray didn't control the thrip. And uh, with being busy on with that particular trench, it's only taken me two weeks to get that bed emptied. So I've spent all my time doing that, when I, whatever I've had spare, and forgot about spraying and this is what happens when you don't spray but since then they've been sprayed they are coming up nice and clean now all the centers will be clean uh, and they're growing away very nicely so i'm more than happy with those a little bit um, initial damage different variety along here um, we've got cauliflowers on the far side and some cauliflowers here so right we've just got a few leek seedlings here now i'm going to show you some problems on these i'll show you what red spider mite looks like Anywhere there's a cauliflower, um, the leek seedling hasn't performed well, so I've actually just pulled it out and pl replanted with uh, a cauliflower, cauliflower. Right, we'll look at this. This is red spider mite. And it's quite bad. It actually turns the leaf silver. Now, I don't spray my seedlings because if we don't, um, if these don't make the grade for exhibition purposes, which I wouldn't exhibit this year anyway, um, they would go in the pot. So that's red spider mite. I will move along and show you. Well, if you look at seedlings come virus free. So if you look here, I mean, you still see possible changes in colour. The camera shows it up even more. When you look at these, they're actually a lovely colour. There's not much virus in those, it's virtually virus free. I'm going to show you what the virus looks like. These are Cumbrian leeks. Uh, this is before the virus is taken out and removed. And as you can see, it's a yellow streak virus. It runs the length of the plant and uh, it's prevalent all the time, but it looks worse in December and January when there's no light levels and the plants aren't growing very quickly. The virus takes over the plant and they virtually go silver. But that's what virus looks like. Um, not to get mixed up with thrip damage on the leeks. If we look here we can see thrip damage again it has a look of virus but it's not consistent right throughout the foliage so that's a that's thrip uh, the last one was red spider and we've just looked at virus um, we look at some these are the plants that were from the laboratories virus free uh, the camera is actually making them look as if they've got a little bit of virus but they haven't they are they're, they're very nice a nice colour and they're growing very well so I'm quite happy with those if you remember uh, maybe a month ago I don't maybe it's not a month ago these cabbages were planted um, they've actually absolutely grown like mad um, obviously it'll be a while before I have any uh, hearts in them but the foliage is good and I should get some really good ones we've been cropping peas for a while uh, so they've grown very rapidly the plants aren't really big uh, this is early onward, but we have had quite a few off. When my grandchildren come down, the first thing they do is rush in, grab a pea pod. As you can see, they're filling out nicely. Just supported by a few branches. Moving along, uh, we've been cropping lettuce. The hearts are coming in very nicely now. This one is called Atlantic, or Atlantica. Uh, it is a, an iceberg lettuce. You see, we've had, uh, I've had maybe half a dozen out of here. Uh, my son-in-law come down and cropped a load of the chilies. Took them into his restaurant. He's left the smaller ones to grow on. 
Uh, we've also had a lot of uh, bell peppers off the top polytunnel. They're coming out very well. Uh, we've been cropping beans for well for a few weeks now. Uh, the beans are looking good. So keep on top of them. If you let the beans get too big, they, they turn stringy and they're not good and they stop producing. But these are still producing loads of flour and I'll get beans for quite a while from there. Um, a little bit slow at the back there, we've got basil. It's coming along nicely. I love basil in with the tomatoes and we are cropping tomatoes very well now. So I'll move along and we'll have a quick look at those. I'll show you oh I'll show you the tomatoes first and then we'll show you some stock. Now this is Maisie. Uh, it's a beautiful tomato. Uh, really nice. Just to show you the shape is very good, the colour is very good. Um, Calyx good. Very heavy cropper. We've I picked a carrier bag from here earlier today. I've had about five or six carrier bags out of here already. And uh, as I say, they are good lovely fruit it tastes very nice they're a lovely shape it's a good exhibition tomato as you can see nice shape there's some very heavy trusses on as we can see here um here's a one oh somewhere along here i think that could be it it's a good heavy truss one truss over folds onto the next one but as i say they are good if you remember they've only had um two feeds and it's been with um, I'm getting old and I'm forgetting what I'm using now it's the new organic fertilizer that I've mentioned several times uh, I can't remember the name of it I'll have to have a look at the bag when we go up but it's had two feeds uh, and they have been put on it's been the high potash one so they're growing great uh, it's a tomato I would definitely recommend that's Maisie stock plants uh, we'll move along now Obviously it's still a little bit early to start setting leaks, but we can see the grass coming on most of the heads now. It's coming very nice. It's a very nice grass. The seed is starting to form now rapidly. We move along. Uh, we still have quite a few heads to shave. So there's still plenty to be shaved uh, for later on. This, this is producing seed at the moment. Plenty of flowers here. Some have just been shaved. Uh, these ones haven't been done long, just a few days. There are, you can see the ones that have just been done, they're just starting to produce grass. This one's only been shaved a day or two. There's quite a few like that. If I can get across onto the far ones, I'll enlarge the camera and see if we can. Some very nice grass starting to appear there. Some really nice heads the grass is looking beautiful and clean i am spraying it regular to keep it clean now uh, so stock plants are looking good i will be looking at starting some leaks away um early september there's a few people wanting early ones there's actually some people been on they've had the show already uh i've had one first and one second out of a couple of shows uh with a young lady who's just been on the phone today so things are st starting to go all right. Um, and people who, who have early shows are wanting a few early plants. So I'll, some of these will be set um, early September. They'll be ready to go out late October and into November. Right, that's about it. Um, pre preparation of beds, I'll wait until we start lifting leaks. Uh, I will cover that in greater depth. But as I say, I've shown you how to fix um, dead soil. What we're going to do to uh, eradicate that and make sure that the soil is good for next year thank you very much we'll see you later bye bye now